It's not always official specs and tons of information. Sometimes you gotta figure out what you have. A friend of mine bought this guitar not knowing what it is and it's up to me to figure out the specs and pinpoint what it is. I don't know for sure, but I know that it's a damn good guitar and I'm gonna demonstrate it for you. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's one of those guitars that I cannot find info online for. The serial number points to the late 90s and I think they were going for the ESP Eclipse from 98. This one, you got the boat on neck construction but it's made out of mahogany. It also has 24 frets and 3 knobs so I don't think they were going for the Eclipse ESP per se. I think they were going for the LTD version which is designated LTD E200. The body is made out of alder, the guitar that I have I think it's made out of alder. You got the bolt on neck construction, 22 extra jumbo frets. The LTD has the Duncan design pickups with the logo on them, the guitar that I have doesn't have any logo but maybe they are similar. Duncan design are made in some outsourced factory by design of Duncan, it's in the name. <laughs> So probably Korean, Chinese, Japanese, I'm not sure what the pickups are. So for this Edwards, we have the Eclipse body shape and thickness. We have the two button layout, a bit different than the LTD. We got a set of unmarked hot pickups, a beautiful two piece figured maple veneer and weirdly an ABR1 bridge that goes directly into the body. And the spacing on it is a bit wonky, I mean I don't get it, a pretty modern sounding and looking guitar and you put an ABR bridge on it. Edward certainly chose a cool finish for it and they made it extremely high gloss, I mean look at it. It has a pretty comfortable slim maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard and these massive extra jumbo frets. The ESP logo on the 12th fret reminds you that Edwards are owned by ESP in case you've missed the subtle visual cues on the headstock. Look closely, produced by ESP. They were not subtle with this, were they? This uh, produced by ESP sticker was later moved on the back of the headstocks. Back of the guitar doesn't have the veneer of course because of all of the colorways for the Eclipse. What's notable and important is that it's a bolt-on neck construction with a maple neck, the serial number on the plate. Doesn't have the LTD binding for the rosewood fingerboard though. So it's not exactly copying the ESP and LTD, I think it has its own character and it's a pretty good guitar. Let's try to figure out the specs and there are a lot of unknowns. But what I managed to gather, we have the Eclipse shape of the body. At least two piece body, lighter in color, that's not mahogany, looks like older. On top of that we have a two piece figured veneer, probably maple. The neck is made out of maple with a bolt on construction. 22 pretty big extra jumbo frets, 24.75 inch scale length. Waving flag ESP headstock, go to tuners, a set of humbuckers, unknown, we're gonna measure them. Made in Japan, Goto bridge and a tailpiece. Here's what's under the neck pickup, if you're recognizing these brown cables for the pickups let me know. We got this hole probably for fitting the bolt on neck, some center point or for the truss rod I'm not sure. We got shielding paint in here and I think that's wax. Someone wax ported the pickups and it got glued with wax to the side of the body. Now speaking of the body I don't think that's mahogany, you see those holes for the screws, that's a lighter color body and I think it's older. Also look at down there the cavity for the pickup adjustment screw. The shooting paint has chipped and I see some lighter in color wood. And here's a look at the routing for the three-way switch. Some more shooting paint under the bridge pickup and I see the thin layer of the maple veneer 
it's definitely not a maple top it's a maple veneer also some more shooting paint chipped away and we can see the lighter in color wood that's definitely older that's not mahogany the routing for the cables that go to the electronic down there unfortunately i got nothing for the pickups if you know anything let me know in the comment section i think someone tried to wax pot them and they got stuck i had to give them a bit of a push to take them out these are probably some cheap pickups like the ones that they put on ltd guitars made in korea or something by design of the manufacturer and outsourced in another factory we're gonna measure them anyway same goes for the bridge pickup nothing to identify them uh, by other than the four screws and the brown cable i definitely haven't seen these maybe you can help me out guys slanted pickup rings weirdly slanted uh, it's not following the curvature of the top properly the bridge pickup especially so they're not a perfect choice and i think they're probably a replacement whoever wax ported the pickups probably replaced the rings as well short screws for the front section of the neck pickup ring long for the rest yeah i think that's just a cheap set of pickups for the bridge we have 1141k ohms switching over to the neck we got 1150 that's probably the same pickup in two different positions middle position both pickups so 1141 is sort of a no man's land i prefer them to be hot around 13 or 14 or soft around 7 8k ohms and i don't like these they're pretty muddy sounding no definition to them three-way pickup selector master volume master tone knurled metal knobs and this one is all the way down to the body and it's scraping i'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver to unscrew it slightly lift it up and position it properly so it rotates freely here's where it was scraping and ate through the polyurethane finish and the paint the bridge and tailpiece are pretty solid and non-locking this one is made in japan by goto a bit of a weird choice to use the abr1 that goes directly into the body and feels kind of weird for this particular guitar i'm having a hard time palm muting on it or it's probably because i suck at playing guitar let's wait anyway 51 grams pretty substantial the tailpiece is also made in japan by goto here's the logo pretty heavy it's a good tailpiece let's weigh this one 77 grams yeah i was expecting that so these are pretty solid and good it's the clip shape of the body with a pretty cool see-through finish with a burst on the edges black burst the see-through finish showing off that beautiful two-piece figured maple veneer we got a bolt on maple neck and a thick piece for the rosewood fingerboard with white side dots i think these are acrylic plastic yep that's definitely an insert that's not paint the headstock is pretty cool looking because Edwards used the same maple figured veneer that they used for the body. The vertical Edwards logo with the E in front of it. And this ugly produced by ESP sticker or logo that is supposed to be on the back of the headstock and is on the back of the headstock on some other guitars. A typical for Edwards wide cavity for the truss rod nut. And surprise, surprise, that's not a two way adjustable that's a traditional one way like on the gibson guitars you see how nice and white the axis to the truss rod nut is so this guitar has some traditional specs a one way adjustable truss rod and the abr bridge which are surprising for me the combination with 11k ohm pots which are modern sounding is is just weird maybe if it was a full thickness guitar the truss rod cover still has the protective film i'm gonna remove it to show you that it's gloss on top it's just one ply let me show you the attention to detail that edwards has you see this is slanted so when you put it against the nut it flushes perfectly so it's a pretty well made guitar as always with edwards the white cavity the shooting paint nicely routed all that on an affordable guitar Edwards are owned by ESP after all and made in Japan at least some of their models pre-2012. I reviewed a lot of them and all of them are of perfect quality. Here's a look at that gorgeous rosewood fingerboard, some nice tricks. The nut is 41.7mm wide or 1.64 inch. The 12 fret is at 51.5 or 2.02 inches, narrower than usual. Thickness of the 1st fret 19.3 or 0.75 inch. Thickness of the 12th fret 20.6 or 0.81. We got a thin comfortable neck. 
a usual thickness for an Eclipse, not a full thickness guitar at 40.4 mm, but remember it's a curved top. A 50 mm distance between the pickup rings. And that's an unusually wide distance between the middle of the pole of the pickup and the middle of the pole of the bridge. 40 and a half millimeters. I'm gonna compare it to another Walt just to show you how big this distance is. Here it is on the Edwards with the ABR1 bridge. Not only a big distance but weirdly slanted. Now check it out for example on a vintage Les Paul. It's much closer to the pickup ring. It's an unusually wide spacing, that's why it was throwing me off when I was trying to power mute. I had to adjust a little. Back to traditional specs, 305mm or 12 inches for the fingerboard, like on a Les Paul Gibson for example. 24.75 inch scale length, so this has some specs that are typical for Gibsons, but it has the ESP Eclipse shape. A nicely rounded off C shape on the 1st fret for the neck profile, getting flatter around the 12th fret, still thin and comfortable though. Here's the back of the guitar, I'm seeing a center line separating at least 2 pieces of what I think it's an older body. Then there are the typical colorways for an Eclipse, the belly colorway here and the high fret axis colorway down here. Here's the compartment for the 3 way switch, shielding paint inside of it. The electronics compartment is down here and it's pretty big. What's weird is that we have the ground wire here, we have the pots and the pots are recessed into the body. It's like they got this huge cavity but there's not enough space for the pots. They had to go even further and not to use the long shaft pots. Do you see it? There's routing for the pots so if you're trying to use some other kinds of pots like the push pulls that are bigger, tough luck. Of course there's shielding paint in here, here's the routing for the pickup cables and the routing for the output jack down there. Some writing here on the side of the pot and a capacitor, I see 500k written on it which is expected for humbuckers. Here's what the output jack looks like, original strap buttons here and here. Here's what the cover for the 3 way switch looks like, shielding on the back side still has the protective film on it. Same goes for the cover for the electronics compartment, still has the protective foil shooting on the back side. Here's the plate for the bolt on neck construction, the ESP logo and 32439 serial number. I cannot date it precisely. And here's the maple neck which is one piece all the way to here and you can clearly see the scarf joint connecting the headstock to the neck. After it we see a volute, I love volutes on these necks, made in Japan sticker after the volute. This one is probably made in Japan, not like the Jixi guitars that I've reviewed later. There's a bit of a flame here on the back of the maple headstock. It's pretty cool looking. Then we got Goto Chrome Tuners non-locking, pretty solid. I'm gonna use 1046 Dunlops to set it in E standard. It is a lightweight guitar at 3336 grams or 7.35 pounds. <laughs>
I got mixed feelings about this Edwards. It's a copy of an ESP, but it's still Japanese, so it feels pretty weird. It's almost an ESP. I'm confused about the specs though. They could have made it mahogany body. Why use older? Why give traditional specs to such a modern looking guitar though? The one way adjustable truss rod, the 22 frets, the ABR1 bridge, and then make it a bolt on maple neck. To top it off, uh, they've put some unknown pickups with weird output at 11.4 and two knob uh, layout. Make it a 12 inch radius rosewood fingerboard, then put it the biggest extra jumbo frets. Even though it's well built, it plays amazingly, it's easy to set, looks like a guitar that doesn't know what exactly it is. Well, I guess that's okay because I don't know what exactly it is. It's a decent guitar and I like documenting the rare stuff.